as you can see I've kind of um, got through this build a bit um, I've sprayed our what we've just glued as well black um, so we can kind of see how good it is and you know that is um, actually not bad I mean that there just needs a little bit of a rescribe where the join line is <coughs> Um, also gone off and done our cockpit now this is all out of the box so hopefully you know hopefully you can see we've got nice little decals going on in there as well which are really nice so for out of the box actually um, it does turn out to be you know a nice um, cockpit and ejector seat but I am going to put a pilot in there um, you know so that's going to cover up a bit of that as well <coughs> right now what I want to look at is the way this kit is actually going together right um, because the problem we have is this kit is very, very much kind of orientated around the fact of this um, sort of like not the standard kind of two half system going on here where um, you glue, you know, kind of basically equally two halves together. And then what you do is I'll just show you bringing this together. Right, so we bring our two fuselage sections together here and what we'd normally do is you'd normally have two halves come together and then we would basically sand away at this um, join line along here and make it all nice and seamless right which is actually rather easy but what they've done I think they've made this kit a bit on the sort of intermediate to um, beginner side of things because what they've done is they've done this whole thing where you don't actually have two equal halves instead we've got this system going on here where it glues so that the join line is actually on the underside of the model and the same thing's going to go on with this wing here as you can see we're going to have a piece that just goes into here right and the join line is going to be along there instead of two halves and sanding nicely along the um, leading edges um, so that's kind of good for intermediate to basic people because let's face it I mean this model is going to spend you know 99.9% .9 of the time sitting on all its wheels you know and you're basically going to see just the top half so you know it does for an intermediate basic uh, modeler does kind of hide all your join lines and seam lines and stuff and you don't have to do so much sanding and everything which is all nice but when you turn it over you know you're going to have these join lines going on all on the underside um, so for a professional modeler uh, I would say you're going to be wanting to tackle um, these join lines that we're going to have here and because it's not on the leading edge it's going to be a lot harder to take care of because we're probably going to have to get filler sanding scribing and probably have to do quite a bit a lot more scribing than you would um, if it was all just nicely on the leading edges so let's um, look at getting this together before we get it together um, the instructions they do want us to um, glue our cockpit um, onto here onto these two kind of um, little things here see we've got two little circles just under there and they go on there it wants us to glue them on there right and then put on top um, at our top of our fuselage section but there is no problem at all with taking this and actually gluing it on this side actually we can take the uh, seat out all right, there's no problem with us gluing it here uh, you know strange how they want us to do that when it just glues absolutely gorgeously better more accurately into position if we do it just here all right I mean you can do it the other way it still fits rather nice it's just it's just so much better just to glue it in into the top half of the fuselage all right just like so all nicely in there a lot nicer and neater and better maybe a little bit more glue just there I mean just in case we can uh, whack a nice little blob in these two circles now the other thing is as well I forgot to almost show you getting out a nice little skinny stick we do have like a little um, lump this is from where it was um, attached to the sprue there's like this tiny little lump just there sticking out any little bit sticking out is gonna 
push our C, uh, uh, push um, uh, where we're going to glue it. It's just going to push it out and it makes it look a bit neat. So you really want to make sure that all, all, when you cut it off the sprue that you get it nicely sanded, flush, nice and neat and tidy as well. And so we can now proceed with gluing this into place on here. All right, and what we're going to do, I'm just going to start with the cockpit section at the front, making sure it's all nicely lined up as much as possible All right, then we're going to get some glue just on the front just to start with All right. I'm kind of getting you off camera there just at the front just to start with All right, and then ah, see now look what I've just done there by accident I've accidentally um, got some glue has gone on to um, our piece here and my thumbs got pressed down on it and what we've got now we've got this kind of a bit of a, a thumbprint going on I don't know if you can see that very well there but that is now gonna have to be just leave that to dry if it ever happens right and once it's dry a little bit of a light sanding and a bit of a scribing and that should be fine right but let's get a peg on this now right at the front so we can sort of lock that in nicely and then what we can do is just start gluing along our join line on the bottom trying to be careful with your gluing um, because it's on like not on a leading edge you know it's got you know you can have kind of like glue marks I mean if you put a little dollop of glue anywhere on the plastic it's going to melt the plastic and make a bit of a a, a warped kind of bit of plastic where you, you drop it because it does melt the plastic although it does evaporate normally pretty quickly on the surface if you've got a big enough blob it'll still take a bit of time to evaporate which uh, gives it enough time to actually do some damage all right, and we've just um, glued all the way along one of those edges all right and hopefully as you can see I mean it's quite a nice fit but it doesn't matter how damn good the fit is at the end of the day that's never gonna look like um, a normal recessed panel line you know we're always gonna have to come along and do a bit of scribing in there which is the whole problem with this kind of system they've got of the way it glues in not having like a, a, a proper two halves all right, so I've just kind of glued all the way along here as nicely and as neatly as possible. Now, I mean, that's looking like a real nice good fit, right? But still, I mean, let's get a bit of um, Tamiya tape just to make sure uh, that it holds into position. All right, just wrap that around. That should make sure that holds in to position um, pretty nicely. Um, now gluing the rest of it is going to be um, pretty basic, so um, I'll turn the camera off. But um, you know, one little note to remember is um, well, one thing about this kit I've found. It's, this is more of a bit of a moan than anything. But um, what we have is I'll just take that off. Is I've already glued on this front. Um, kind of panel you've got another panel here the one with the, the four little raised areas which is kind of like going into the block 32 um, and you've got a choice of either panel and it glues on um, and you can see how um, these two panels as well we glue them on the sides and everything um, now this again you know the way Tammy has gone about it it just makes it harder for the modeler because um, plain and simply I've, I've done the Hazagiri one and the Hazagiri one I mean this was all nicely you know one piece um, we didn't have to put on all these different panels and all this kind of thing it was just a case of if you wanted to put on these four raised um, bits onto the front of the nose section you basically drilled drilled out four holes and then you had four different raised pieces and glued them on top and that was it so the, the, what I'm basically saying is because we've got these panels that we glue on here we're gonna have to maybe do a bit of filling to get the panels like all nicely fitted properly sand it down a bit and then we're gonna have to rescribe it and all this kind of stuff when um, 
you know, that could have just done it as one piece. So that's just like a little bit of a moan. So I'll um, kind of get back to you when, um, you know, we've got something else to show. I want to just look at the um, the M61 Vulcan cannon that's on this um, F-16. Because um, what we've got here, um, I'll just show you. We put in, again, you know, another panel going on here. So I'm going to have to, you know, scribe that out nicely. It fits really nice. But still, what we've got is we've got, I don't know if you can see that, well, you should be able to see that, we've got quite a big kind of basically hole in the model. Um, you know, and I want to kind of improve this and sort of do a bit of scratch building just to kind of take away the fact that we're going to have like basically a hole that you're basically going to be able to see through. So we're going to cover it up. Now, the way we're going to cover it up is by putting the actual um, gun barrels in here. So what we, what I've got, I've got this um, um, just any kind of any sort of um, wire or something you can find. This is I think carbon fibre, um, but you just want to cut three of them to um, you know a nice length that fits inside here rather nicely. They don't have to be long at all, right? And we can just cut these off. Okay. Hopefully, there we go. Cut about three of them to about the same length, all three. Right, because I'm going off um, some reference photos, and it's got a nice picture showing these three nice little barrels inside that um, hole that we didn't want to cover up. All right, but what we want to do is we want to sand um, one of the ends off. Right, so using a nice little skinny stick, I'm just sanding one of the ends off because then when we cut them with the cutters, it doesn't cut them all nice and um, flush and all that. So a nice quick little sanding on one end. We don't have to do um, both ends because um, the, the one end's not going to be showing. Nice, get them all nice. Well, there we go. And what we want to do is glue them together so i'm just going to get out a nice bit of super glue so we have a nice little palette just to put our super glue on all right nice little dollop there probably don't need anywhere near that much and what i'm going to do um cocktail stick now as you can see i've got all my three um gun barrels lined up so just at the back all right so we want to touch it with some super glue but we don't want it to start coming off like that so I'm just going to get my tweezers and hopefully very quickly get it in position before our glue dries so please bear with me there we go, I think we just got that so fingers crossed let's have a look on the... So oh no another piece come off there not quite glued one second just take your time get them looking nice a little bit of dollop of glue without it coming sticking to the stick there we go let's try and quickly position that because that's going to glue a bit too quick there we go, I think we just got it, just got it in the end. So, what we want to do is we want to have a little check and just have a look down there now. And hopefully what you're seeing um, is some nice gun barrels going on inside there which is just going to look that little bit better than plain simply a hole now what we could do and we probably might have to do as well because this isn't probably going to fit we'll just double check see if it does oh actually it does fit there we go hopefully you're seeing in there now some nice gun barrels rather than nothing at all um, you could which I think I might I might get a bit of plastic card if I can get it out now Hold on. I think the super glue may have. No, there we go. If you, uh, what you may want to do is you may want to kind of maybe get a bit of plastic card, put it just on the top so that you really can't see in there at all, right? Because it doesn't completely cover it. It just kind of makes these three little circles nicely inside there. Um, so I might do that later. Moving along with the build, um, we've got something here which is kind of quite interesting actually for. 
um, for, for kind of model building really is where they actually tell you to fill in certain panel lines on the kit now when kind of like filling in panel lines it's nice to use green putty um, which I like to kind of just have a bit of cellulose finish just on the side because I find this green putty can kind of dry up a bit too quickly and sort of go all um, hard and gritty um, a bit too quick so I like to kind of dip in the cellulose thinners and I'm just getting it straight from um, the, um, the tube here and what we're going to do we need to just get rid of um, this little panel line here just this one well sorry not this panel and we've got a couple of uh, a kind of like a basically a square panel with rivets in there right and I'm just trying I'm, I'm doing it in circles because I'm trying to kind of you know rub the um, the actual putty actually into the recesses and I'm just putting a little very fine layer just on top there like that so that's nicely filled them in um, green putty can take quite a long time to dry um, before it goes rock hard um, you know properly curing and everything so that when we sand it away we know we're not going to get any shrinkage so leave it for about uh, you know one or two days to fully dry the thicker you put it down the longer it's going to need to dry um, you know so that is just that and we'll sand that out later um, and strangely as well we've got these little pegs here so I'm kind of these metal sort of um, pins going on here which I'm kind of interested to find out how these are going to actually work or is it just being a bit fancy or something um, I don't know but we'll, we'll find out later um, we've now come to our suckers, our nice air intakes here, which um, for the Tamiya kit is really nice because inside we've got no ejector pin marks, it's all nice, smooth, you know, it's all nice and perfect, but we're still going to have that bit of a seam line going on just inside there, and the thing is, I mean, these suckers, this one big air intake on the F-16s is so big, um, you know, it's something that you can quite see in quite easily, so we do want to kind of try and tackle this um, you know at least a bit now the one thing I would do is start off by gluing um, our join lines um, but what I like to do for this one is not be shy with our Tamiya extra thin cement right really sort of um, get in there really try and like um, well yeah you know just kind of make it so it's really kind of um, because what Tamiya Extra Thin Cement does is it melts the plastic as you probably already know. So what we want to do, I really want to try and get the plastic where the join line is melting a lot. Alright, really kind of make it all gooey and oozy as much as we can. Just finishing off this last side here trying to be as generous as I can and then because we put down so much Tamiya Extra Thin Cement right what we can do we can start sort of rubbing it from side to side so what we're doing is is we're taking that um, you know kind of melted plastic and we're sort of working both pieces together really sort of oozing them merging them bringing them as close together as possible because what that's going to do, it's going to ooze it all nicely together to help us with um, getting rid of our seam line. It's basically going to act as a filler. You know? And don't be afraid to kind of keep getting in there with a bit more and oozing it a bit more. Right now while that's kind of still nice and oozy, and I don't know about you, but that's looking kind of good already inside there. Although actually, I mean this is the front bit, the bit we're going to see, I'm kind of seeing that we've, we need a bit of pressure just on here. I don't know if a, a peg's going to be too much pressure, so maybe a bit of tape instead. And we probably want to leave that to dry because that's going to be a bit of a gap and we don't want gaps. So let's uh, tape that down just there holding that together and then uh, oh, maybe a bit more glue just in there and let's just leave that now to dry for a bit well that now dried a bit and sort of um, 
having no gap in there. What we want to do is we want to start working on getting a seam line sorted. Now get in a cotton wool bud and get in some um, cellulose thinners. All right, cellulose thinners will melt plastic. All right, so when we dip it on the end of our um, cotton wool bud here, all right, what we can do is just start rubbing at where our little join line is going on here, and eventually it starts to, you know, lightly melt the plastic and sort of starts kind of. Um, melting the two pieces of plastic together and joining them up nicely, filling in those um, seam lines and getting it all pretty nice and seamless. Now the only thing is you'll notice after a while it will start to kind of um, um, kind of make, make the surface of your air intake a little bit on the rough side because it's sort of really sort of melting this plastic so we are going to have to come in and just get like maybe a nice bit of a fine sanding stick in there just to sort that out now I've just done that one bit there and hopefully you can just see how nice that has gone hopefully inside there right, and I think that is basically it right, all we need now is one of our nice spongy sanding sticks and we can just get in there give it a nice bit of a sand I mean obviously we need to let that dry because I mean that is like melted plastic there and we want to let that dry and then sand it away and that should look actually rather nice in there so um, it is just a case of taking your time and just keep on rubbing at it until it goes away Right then, after looking at um, this now, I'm looking at it and it's looking quite good inside there but I don't know, I just want to make sure it's all good. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some Mr. Surfacer out and just make sure um, we, we, we get rid of that seam line. So using the 1000 grade Mr. Surfacer, let's just get the lid off, if I can, there we go. Let's get in the lid off, right, and get in again a cotton wool bud. We're just going to dip into the Mr. Surfacer, right? And again, we're just going to nicely rub with the Mr. Surfacer on the inside, right? And just nicely rub that in, just like so. Coming from the other end as well. Hopefully, as you're seeing just there, right? Nice way of applying Mr. Surfacer with this. Um, cotton wool bud and we've just nicely hopefully just filled in whatever's left that needs to be filled in there just to make sure and then I'll show you what you need to do next now that our Mr. Surfacer has dried, we can kind of start smoothing this off now. Now, um, just off camera, I did do two coats of Mr. Surfacer, just to kind of give it that, you know, just to make sure. Um, now, what I want to do is I want to start smoothing this off. Um, now, sanding in here is going to be quite hard, um, and it's going to take a bit of time. Um, so what I want to do, I want to smooth it down with um, Mr. Colour leveling thinners. Now this is um, a nice thinners that isn't as strong as cellulose thinners um, but it's still quite strong but it's not strong enough to melt the plastic like cellulose does and leave kind of nasty um, marks but it's strong enough to kind of get the mister surfacer up. Right so what we want to do is just in here um, you can just see we've got a bit of a mess going on with the mister surfacer so just to clean it up and help it along we can just nicely as you can see um, just kind of mop that up quite easily with the uh, leveling thinners but we're not damaging the plastic like we would if we um, used cellulose thinners all right so I'm just uh, getting my cotton wool burnt and I'm gonna just show you that again you know you can just nicely kind of wipe up as you can see there the Mr. Surfacer. So I'm going to just clean all this up now inside. Now that's all dried again, what we want to do, we want to just sand it down and kind of finely smooth it off. So get in um, like a metal file right, and get in one of your nice um, mini sanding sticks, the, um, the nice fine spongy one. We can then 
what we want to do is we can stick it into our air intake and just nicely sand away at it and the whole point of the metal foil is that if we was getting here with just our um, mini stick here the problem is we just haven't got I mean look I mean you can really sort of just bend these um, it hasn't got like the stiffness that we need for it to actually kind of have a nice effect and sand it all down so the metal foil just gives it that bit of extra strength for us to be able to kind of just nicely get it sanding away in there right now this is a bit of a time consuming thing sadly it's not like normal sanding where we can really sort of sand at it and get it all really really nice and everything um, you know we've really got to keep sanding and keep sanding and keep sanding because it is quite tricky to get in there and everything it's going to take a bit of time so just keep on sanding at it until it just starts to look good <laughs> Thank you.